Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, back with some more Southeast Asia Animal Pack DLC action with Planet Zoo. That was quite a bit to say for an introduction. Wow. Uh, we are back with another animal. I saw quite a few of you requesting the Sun Bear, not just in the previous episode, but in the episode prior to that as well. And so today we are making the Sun Bear Enclosure. A bit of an idea over here that I'm really excited to share, and I'm pretty pleased with how it actually turns out as well. So... We're obviously going to dive right into it. Now, as we do, though, I just want to mention very quickly, folks, if you've been enjoying this little mini-series and you'd like to see it continue and you'd like to see more of this kind of coverage for future DLC and whatnot, please don't hesitate to let me know by leaving a like down below. You can also leave a comment down below with regards to which animal you'd like to see next and your thoughts or, you know, ideas or feelings or opinions that you'd like to share as well. I do read all of the comments, so go ahead and, uh, you know, let me know what you think and what you'd like to see next. And beyond that as well, as I've mentioned before, if you would like to pick the DLC up for yourself, if you do so at the link I've included in the description down below and in the pinned comment down below, you would be supporting the channel as you grab the DLC as well. Again, it is not an obligation, but I do greatly appreciate it. I see many of you have picked it up from that link already, so thank you very much for that. It is greatly appreciated. But with all that said and done, let's go ahead and focus on the task at hand, as it were. So, what is the play here? With the Sun Bear, there is a particular um, item that they can use, a particular uh, enrichment item, I was looking for the word there, uh, that they can use that sort of <laughs> drove the entire thought process and the concept and everything. I wanted to create a slightly more natural space. I wanted it to have uh, less uh, kind of human uh, intervention, I suppose, or less of a human presence than I've done for the last couple of builds. It's something that many of you have uh, asked for, not just with regards to this mini series, but also in my kind of franchise mode stuff. So I thought, why don't we try out this uh, slightly different approach over here? Um, and the the core inspiration um, was actually the hammock enrichment item. Uh, so taking the hammock enrichment item and a more natural approach to things and kind of throwing that together, I wanted to build what I feel like at least might be a sort of a, a I don't want to say, I don't want to say a zen place, because it's not zen in the actual sense of what zen means, but like a, a chill space to, to, to rest on a hammock there. That's, that's, that's the right way to put it, like a good, cool, chill space. It's not, it's not zen. Zen has specific, you know, uh, implications and whatnot, uh, but, but that kind of like, that relaxation vibes, a vacation spot, if you will. So I'm trying to build something like that, and, and when I think about vacation spot, I think of a few different types of vacation spots and a few different types of relaxation, you know. Uh, for, for, for many people, just kind of like going for a, a nice long swim or just going to the lake, you know, especially especially here in, in, in Ontario and in, in much of Canada, going to the cottage and, and chilling at the lake and stuff like that, those are, those are kind of indicative of of calming experiences, so I wanted to have a nice big body of water. It also goes with our kind of island thing that I was mentioning last session, where, you know, I thought it'd be nice to have everything kind of feel like a separate island. Not actual islands, but have that feel, again, of separate islands. So that was one thing. Uh, then as I was thinking about lakes, I was thinking about, you know, for some reason, uh, people jumping off those giant rocks into the water is like a big visual I often have go hand in hand with, uh, with with relaxation as much of a you know that doesn't sound relaxing it sounds like you know it's a, in fact it, it gets your heart going but it's like a vacation vibe you know it's like a it's that kind of a relaxation you you, you get what i mean over here in terms of relaxing is why i was very hesitant like oh i stayed stayed away from the word zen as much as i could there it's like it's like the antithesis of zen bear with me here folks i'm actually really happy with how this uh uh, plays out how this how this how this build come uh, you know comes together is trying to explain exactly everything that was kind of flying through my head uh, is is going to prove maybe a bit of a challenge because I was my, my my head was going a million miles a minute as I was building this but yeah so you know I've got the I've got the the jumping off the the cliff into the water I've got the nice kind of you know big lake vibes I wanted to get a waterfall in as well because you know the just the sound of a waterfall to me has that same feeling as well again it's not quiet per se but it has that relaxation vibe uh so pulling all those little kind of motifs and ideas and thoughts together uh to build this space and then at the top they're capping it all off with the uh the hammock now obviously one thing leads to another i didn't want this to just be like a um this like a misa if you will on top of which there's the enclosure and then you see the water i wanted the animal to be able to 
uh, engage with it all. I wanted our uh, guests to be able to engage with it all as well. And so that's why I've got this kind of multi-layered um, thing going that uh, was actually, I wouldn't necessarily say it was challenging to build because I've done stuff like this. I I've taken on enough technical challenges with Planet Zoo that I've started to find, started to understand where it starts to break and what where it doesn't break. Um, but it was still, it was still something to think about at least, uh, you know, how the, the, uh, not just the animals, but the, the keepers, the, the caretakers, how they're going, well, I forget that the caretakers are actually a different type of role, the keepers specifically, how they're going to get between the layers so that they can not only deliver food, but they can also clean the spaces and all that kind of stuff. So you saw me building the ramps around the sides. Uh, you saw me like smoothing the train as well to make sure that everything's kind of ramps so that these, uh, these guys can actually walk up and down the space. Because for the bears, since they're climbers, we have uh, we have other options for them going you know, vertical distances, as it were. Now over here, I wanted to build them a nice big cave as well. Um, I'm actually really pleased with how the cave looks. I know it might sound a little, uh, a, a little silly, but I've built many a cave in Planet Zoo, and this one just kind of clicked the best for me. It just... It's, it's nice, it's big, it's spacious, uh, but it doesn't feel too... I don't know, it feels like, it, like I buy it. You know, I buy it like this would be a real um, hole in the side of a, of a space like this, and, and so the cave seems actually viable. Pretty pleased with it. Um, but apart from that, yeah, there's putting out a lot of vegetation as well over here, as you can see, finding the, the nice shapes. I quite like it when a tree grows kind of sideways like that, uh, uh, the tree that we just put down by the, uh, by the waterfront. Um, <laughs> which waterfront? It's all waterfronts. Uh, the, the one isolated tree out front. Um, but yeah, as I was kind of alluding to earlier, because the bears are climbers, we have alternative ways to get them going up and down the uh, the, the various levels. And that was a big reason for the, uh, the verticality as well. I wanted to build some verticality into the space, and then I wanted to use uh, climbing equipment, or cl climbing equipment, climbing, uh, <laughs> climbing platforms and climbing uh, surfaces and, 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 and logs and what have you, to actually integrate all that and uh, and then see if the bears would use it. Now, initially in my head, I had something more complex planned, but then as the space kind of came together and came to life, and as I was kind of getting those like vibes in that I was hoping for, I realized that something complex would kind of go against that. Instead, I wanted something simple. Uh, you know, I can picture if, if instead of just playing logs, if they were ladders, I can totally picture taking a dip in the lake and then climbing a ladder to the top of that wooden like platform and just basking in the sun as a human being. You know, I can see that. Or, you know, basking in the hammock. Maybe I'd rather do that when I'm dry. Anyway, I'm quite pleased with this space over here. I think it captures a lot of... I, I think it captures the essence of the region, kind of, in like, you know... It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very common, like, vacation spot. Um, so that was kind of like my tie-in, I guess, to the Southeast Asia. Uh, but uh, it, it kind of captures all that, and then it also is a, is a very different take from, uh, you know, what I usually do and what I've been doing for the uh, for this DLC as well. So I had a lot of fun with this one, actually. I uh, had a lot of fun kind of like conceptualizing it before I even sat down with the game, and then sitting down with the game, I was really pumped to try and execute it. And that initial step as well, that, that first move of digging a giant hole into the ground, this isn't the first time I've done that, but it was just as scary to, to click those clicks this time as it was the first time I did it. Um, we, uh, when I went to the, uh, funnily enough, it was for the Formosan black bear. So very similar region, <laughs> very similar animal. Uh, that was the first time at Elitsu North where I just, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of all everything being flat. Let's just make a giant hole in the ground and we'll make it work. And I was pleased with it then. And I'm pleased with it now. I really quite like the shape we've ended up with. It's very different than my usual. Again, it's a, uh, the it's like based off of a cylinder as opposed to your typical kind of square. Uh, and, and when I say cylinder, I mean v from a volume perspective, not just from like a like a perimeter, not just a 2D cylindrical shape. Yeah, we do that often. That's a that's a circle. I mean, it's a cylinder. It's got that that height as well. I'm really quite happy with how it looks. We do also get time going in like little tiny increments over here, so I can actually build this waterfall out. And this might be a waterfall that I'm most pleased with the quickest. Uh, I've been like kind of getting in the zone with waterfalls lately. Again, those of you that have been watching uh, the Let's Play or have, have seen the, <laughs> the growth of my not just waterfall use, but my waterfall, like, I guess, executions as well. Uh, and usually they still take me a fair bit of time to like just get, get comfortable with. But 
today I was, I, I feel pretty on point with this one. I feel pretty good about like how there's no actual water there, but we're able to make it look like there's water. It's got flow to it. I make a bit of a mistake over here, but I'll correct that after the time lapse. Uh, but overall, like, you know, it was pretty quick for me to make this waterfall and uh, I've got the rocks jutting out. I got the vegetation in the area and stuff. The whole space. I really like the whole space. I'm very pleased actually with this enclosure. Uh, I hope you all are as well. Again, if you are, let me know. If you are not, let me know. I'm very open to constructive feedback, whether it's with regards to what you're seeing on screen or the approach to it as well, right? Like this, how I've covered the DLC and whatnot. So I'd love to hear your thoughts as I'm putting down some of the vegetation over here. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, of course, on the uh, the enclosure as well, because I'm, I'm quite pleased with it, which means there's got to be got to be something something wrong that I'm not looking at. But folks, that is it for the time lapse today. We're going to head into regular speed, pick up some sun bears and uh, have a good time in the, the sun, I guess, with the bears, sun bears. Yeah. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse and I am pretty pleased with how this space has actually turned out. I was very nervous going into it. I'm sure I mentioned during the uh, time lapse as well. But uh, making that giant hole in the ground was certainly nerve wracking as a, uh, you know, first move in this time lapse. But I did it to kind of force myself out of my comfort zone and try something a little different, maybe something a little uh, wild, a little wacky, I suppose. But uh, I think it's come together quite nicely. Again, I'm sure I talked about kind of like what was inspiring me as far as my overall design decisions and my my motifs and whatnot so hopefully i've gone over all that during my time lapse but right now i'm really excited to see the space in action again this is one of those more uh complex spaces i suppose as far as getting it to work technically with the game is concerned we have multiple layers we got to make sure that our keepers are able to get through to all of those layers we're using sort of ramps uh, made into the ground to try and enable our keepers from doing that they might we might actually need to make some adjustments while on the fly today, uh, because this is such a sort of uh, non-standard layout, we might need to go in and every once in a while just tweak some stuff to make sure they're actually able to walk down this area. That's my biggest concern with this build right now, is I'm not sure if our keepers will be able to come all the way down over here, but once they're down over here, they'll have easy enough access to get down over here and up over there to do all the cleaning and stuff like that. But just to play it safe, I did put the... Uh, food tray up top over here so it's basically you know the quickest thing to service and of course as far as water is concerned the bears will be coming down over here so hopefully hopefully our layout has influenced the bears to go up and down the bears of course have the uh, good fortune of being able to climb not just being able to climb but wanting to climb so this climbing platform will allow them to go up and down but unfortunately keepers i suppose it is a workplace hazard they're not so willing to uh, to use these poles to kind of go up and down like a you know like a, like a, like a, like a firefighter. I guess you'd end up with at least a couple of splinters. Oof. Okay. I wish I hadn't said that out loud. Now I'm like picturing it. Ow. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully this will all work out again from a technical perspective. There are some things going on that might prove challenging, might, might prove a bit of an issue. Um, I also, I kind of wish I could like, you could choose which type of rock. I understand that the rock types are determined by the uh, biome that the, the, zoo is actually in but i wish for sandbox mode you could just kind of choose the different rock types because i would like to blend this in a bit more nicely but i also wanted this mossy look either that or i wish they had this moss shader this like dynamic moss shader for all of the rock types like it's not like moss only grows in tropical areas you know right so i would like to be able to use these uh taiga rocks that blend in so nicely like I, i've always loved whoops i've always loved how smoothly like the the actual geometry blends into the uh uh, the, the, rather I should say how, how smoothly the meshes, like the physical objects you place down, uh, merge and, and, and meld in with the terrain at when you've sort of painted it right. I've always loved that. So I wish I could do that a bit more up over here, but yeah, it is what it is. I mean, these are mostly experimental, uh, test runs and whatnot to, to try some ideas out. So hopefully our uh, lovely new addition will have a wonderful time in this, uh, lovely little space over here. I'm quite pleased with the uh, the waterfall as well. Might be a little too... No, actually that works quite nicely. This is the only thing that stands out to me as potentially problematic and if I could just find... <laughs> uh, herein lies the challenge is finding the right VFX piece over here. I don't know which one is the, uh, it's the midsection. Looking for the splash. One of these is the splash. It's just that it... Uh, thought I fixed it well enough but from a different angle doesn't look as well as I would like it to because you can see the ripples going all the way out there. I would rather not. In fact, we probably don't even need a uh, a, a splash over here. We got one, we got two. Where is... Ooh, is it you? Maybe? No? That's, oh, come on. Come on. 
I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I would like to clean that up. If oh, there it is. That must be it. I got you. Yeah, that's it. Cool. I was gonna say, it's like I would like to clean this up if possible, because um, why not? Right? I'm a, I'm a big uh, big believer in if it if it can be fixed, then why why don't we fix it? I mean, again, this is more about showcasing the animals and stuff and and all the new stuff, but. That just looks so much better, right? Uh, all right, cool. Also, yeah, using the uh, the rapids kind of uh, foam up over here to make it feel like stuff's going out this way. Why do I still have stuff going out this way? Do I have? Have I mistakenly put down two rapids foam? I think I may have actually rapids foam. Yeah, okay. Let's get rid of this one. When did I put down three? Still have some going out that way. Why, why are there so many? I, I only remember putting down one. I mean, like, I look, what is this? Why do I have, like, ten of them on top of each other? All right, not the end of the world. Go ahead and flip you around. I can do this all in real time. I try I try to minimize. In, in franchise mode, I don't do any real time when I'm uh, when I'm doing a time lapse. Uh, so it makes it harder to place these, like, VFX and stuff. I try to keep that to, uh, to a minimum during time lapsing, though. Even, like, t today I was able to do a little bit of it at least. That's okay. I would like it to be a bit denser. We could do the ripples and stuff instead as well. That's also an option. Could also do this kind of a rotation. That goes down into the terrain. Kind of becomes a part of the waterfall. Or or we could just move this further back as well. I'm gonna make this space a bit more densely uh, packed with waterfall stuff, I guess. I'll rotate you up. This is going to become my obsession, isn't it? I get some new animals in here. Maybe I should just leave this be for now. Spending too much time focusing on uh, on this. It's just that I wish you could see these, you know? I wish you couldn't see these. What if I pull this out a bit more? And I, I have noticed that an animal has escaped, but like I said, it's like sandbox mode. I'm not too fussed about that. It's not like our franchise mode playthrough where... All of those little things need to be attended, be, be tended to immediately. Where did my... Where did my VFX go? <laughs> How are you running away from me? Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna leave this be for now. We might come back later and, and deal with it at that point in time. But I really want to get into the animal and I really want to get into uh, some of the... Well, some of what this showcase is supposed to be about. Now again, I just want to mention, folks, if you have animals that you would like to see up next as opposed to some random pick from my own mind and heart let me know in the comments down below i have been paying attention to the comments i have been reading all the comments as i always do and the sun bear uh actually came up a fair bit two sessions ago as well as last session uh there were a couple of requests for some other animals as well but it felt like the sun bear came up fairly often uh and i'm pretty curious about the sun bear as well again if you're familiar with the channel if you've watched the uh, uh franchise mode like playthroughs and whatnot you'll know i'm a bit of a sucker for bears i do quite like bears um so i'm excited to dive into the sun bear there is also a new uh, enrichment item that I'm particularly excited for, and I'm sure I touched on this during the time lapse, but it's what kind of inspired this build. So uh, I am really excited to see them in action. Now, I want to mention again, like I was saying, leave a comment down below if you have a preference for which of these animals you'd like to see next. If you've uh, not seen the prior videos, I will have links to them in the description down below. If you'd like to pick the DLC up for yourself, I'll have a link in the description and the pinned comment down below where if you buy it from that link, you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Many of you have come through and supported through there. I appreciate it greatly. Many of you have mentioned that you forgot about the link and, and so you've already picked it up. Don't worry about that. Don't, there's never any pressure. I appreciate the sentiment. I appreciate the thought. Just thought I'd throw out those uh, reminders every once in a while. I try not to do it too much. I should also say, by the way, again, if you're enjoying the series, leave a like. It really helps me kind of understand what folks are interested in. And if you're new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing because... Uh, I mean, you know, we do a lot of Planet Zoo, we do a lot of management games, we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot more of this kind of stuff. There's a lot of games coming out that I have my eye on, similar to this as well. So, if you like that kind of stuff, if you like strategy games, we do a lot of that in, uh, in these parts. Alright, Sun Bear. Elarctos Melianus. Elarctos. Elarctos Melianus, alright, fair enough. Uh, they are vulnerable. Population in the wild is unknown. The sun bear is a small species of bear that lives in the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia. It has dark brown to black fur with a yellow tan face and muzzle with a distinctive orange colored crescent marking across its upper chest. I believe that's where the name is kind of like, isn't that? Um, I could be mistaken. The sun bear has a broad head, long, oblong snout, 
and small rounded ears. Males and females look the same, but males are 10 to 20% larger than females. They measure between 48 inches and 60 inches in length, <laughs> and weigh between 59.4 and 143 pounds. I was gonna say, um, it'd, be, it'd be fun to take bets of like, hey, our measurement's gonna be in, uh, in kilograms or pounds. Um, the sun bear is a vulnerable species. It is mainly threatened by habitat destruction through deforestation and agricultural land conversion, often to create palm oil plantations, indeed. Uh, they are also hunted for body parts that will be used in traditional medicine, with their gallbladders being particularly sought after. Although the current population of sun bears is unknown, it is thought that their numbers have decreased by 30% in recent decades. Wow. Many of the areas they live in are protected, but illegal deforestation still occurs. Now, when it comes to anytime, anytime uh, palm oil gets brought up, uh, if you have not seen this, I can highly recommend checking it out. It's one of my favorite. Um, well, it's a, at the end of the day, it's an advertisement. But it's one of my favorites out there. Uh, I, I believe if you just YouTube search uh, orangutan uh, palm oil ad or something like that, you'll you'll probably find it. And it's just it, it talks about the whole palm oil situation. Uh, it's a illustrated. It's an animated uh, advertisement. And uh, I quite like it, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big problem. The whole palm oil thing is a big problem, and well, we're not going to get into that. It's a big problem, <laughs> and it's quite unfortunate. Uh, the natural habitat spread across Southeast Asia. Hmm. I thought. Hmm. You know what? I uh, I thought they were actually spread out a little bit further than uh, than what we're seeing over here. Well, hey, you live and you learn, right? They are. Yeah, they're fairly common in Southeast Asia, but you can see they have. Uh, a decent bit of land requirement. I'm pretty sure I've got myself covered. I believe uh, I checked at the beginning of this time lapse, kind of like drew a circle to get an understanding of uh, the kind of scale we're dealing with. Uh, but yeah, 920 meters per meters squared. Sorry, <laughs> 920 meters per second is how much space they need. Well, that's uh, that's not how that works. 920 meters squared, uh, and then they need 56 meters squared of climbing. This is I've never understood that 56 meters squared of climbing. If climbing is measured as an area. Is kind of a. It's always been weird to me. I, I hope we've hit that though. They don't need any water or, you know, deep water for, like, swimming or anything, but we've given them plenty of water to hopefully be able to drink from. And I do believe we are fine as far as preventing their escape, because we are using the uh, sides of mountains and cliffs to do that. Group size is 1 to 2, up to 1 female, up to 1 male. Read that backwards, but that doesn't make a difference. Male bachelor group size is 1 to 2, and female bachelor group size is about the same. There is no dominant system. The mating system is promiscuous. And their relation with humans is neutral, and unfortunately, guests cannot enter the habitat. Man, I'd love to just, like, I don't know. Bears always seem so cuddly. You know, they just look they just look so soft and friendly. Like, you ever, have you ever had a bear wave at you? It's such a delightful feeling. I've had bears wave at me. Like, when you wave at bears, bears, like, wave back. Not, I'm not saying naturally. Perhaps it's something they get trained. You know, being in the zoo, they get, like, familiar with the, the gesture or something. I don't know where it comes from, but it is, it's such a satisfying feeling to have a bear wave back at you. <laughs> Size, 4.5 feet long for males. Four feet long for females. Again, average sizes there. Life expectancy is 27.5 years across the board. Weight is 114.4 pounds for the males and 81.4 for the females. Sexual maturity is at four years. Sterility is at death. And one to three offspring per mating event. I'm very excited to see bear babies, honestly. Always, always excited. Uh, gestation incubation period is six months. Interbirth period is 30 months. And reproduction in captivity is average. So, you know, hopefully we'll we'll get lucky and we'll see... Uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll get lucky and they'll get lucky and we'll see some uh, baby bears. Sun bears are solitary with the exception of a mother with her cubs. They only interact to mate. Due to the secretive nature of the species, there are gaps in the knowledge regarding their mating habits. What is known is that males will track females by smelling their urine. When a male and female meet, they will have a brief courtship and mate before going their separate ways. The female will be pregnant for three to seven months, during the late weeks of her pregnancy, she will locate a den in a hollow tree or somewhere similar where she will give birth to one to three cubs. Cubs stay with their mother for three years. After this point, she is likely to mate again. They will then leave her to, leave, to live solitarily and independently. Sun bears reach sexual maturity at three to four years old. Fair enough. It is wild to me. I've mentioned this before as well. It is wild to me how little we know about some animals. It's just... Yeah, we just don't know much. That's wild. <laughs> Research status. Again, it looks like these are all fairly familiar. These are all also fairly familiar. The hammock is new and exclusive, I believe, to the uh, sun bear. Whereas the scratching tree, Scots pine and tamarind, those are both with our uh, uh, Bab Babirusa? Babirusa, right? 
Babirusa, yeah. Again, it's a very unfamiliar animal to me, so literally I'm learning the name and trying to memorize the name of it. Um, so, that's nice. At least there's the hammock there that's unique to this guy. But it also means that the Babirusa does not have any unique um, enrichments. I've said this a couple times. I would like to see every animal have at least one unique enrichment item. If it makes sense, obviously. Sometimes it doesn't. The foraging wall, I can't remember for the life of me. I'm pretty sure that's been around, right? I'm fairly certain I recall seeing other bears use the foraging wall. In fact, why don't we go ahead and check our little grizzly bear here. Ah, no, that's the tree forager. Ooh, the tire is new. Oh, hello. Okay. I like that. Um, who else? The Formosan black bear? Yeah, you know what? I guess this, uh, this foraging thing is new as well. Well, that's cool. I like that. That's good. Cool. I can get behind that. Foraging wall is, uh, is new, I guess. Alright, fun facts. Fun fact number one. The sun bear is the smallest bear species. Oh my. I think I've given them too much space. <laughs> it's very possible. But that's why I've given, like, food at one spot, water in another spot, so they'll hopefully move around. Sun bear cubs are born blind and hairless. Okay. Sun bears are also known as honey bears because of their love of honey and their habit of breaking open beehives to get it. See, so I know this thing, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure every time I every time I think about this fact, I think about, oh, is Yogi Bear a sun bear? He is not. Yogi Bear is a brown bear, I'm fairly certain. If anybody knows better, feel free to correct me. But I was very tempted to put a picnic table in the enclosure to make a reference to, like, picnic baskets. Uh, and then I was like, wait, hang on a second. That ain't right. Yogi Bear's a brown bear. These guys are sun bears. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure. I mean, it's got to be, because sun bears aren't in North America, so why would they have a sun bear? Yeah, it's got to be a brown bear. Uh, the sun bear's tongue is 8 to 10 inches long. It uses its tongue to extract insects and honey. <laughs> and fact number five, sun bears can copy each other's facial expression, a primate-like behavior. Oh, that's, that is interesting. Uh, I like fun fact three. I like fun fact five. They're the, they're the funnest of facts among these fun, fun facts. Sun bears can copy each other's facial expressions, a primate-like behavior. Is that, uh, do they use that for, for, for communication? Is that, uh, do they use it for things other than communication? Do they use it for things like mockery? You know, like, what, uh, what is the extent of copying facial expressions? Huh. I do quite like that one. I, li I like three as well, but, like, I'm familiar with three, so it's not a new one for me. Uh, fun fact five, though, I like that, I like that a lot. Reviewing fun facts for from from Zoopedia is uh is my part time. Uh, all right, I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and get some of these animals in here. Animal market, yes, please. Any species I would like the. Let me check something here. It was suggested to me that there's a done button down over here, which is why my selections weren't refreshing for these last couple of episodes. But uh, but no, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, sun bear. I know how to spell. S comes where around here. There we go. I know my alphabet. So sun bear. Yeah, very weird. Very weird that I have to do that. Or click refresh list. I guess I would do it as well. All right, let's get these guys in here. Uh, so one and one, right? Uh, sure. Why don't we get three over here? And Mawar as well. Put you guys over to our animal section. Where are you guys? All oh, right, I keep forgetting that I actually have quite a few, uh, quite a few animals in here. Both of you. Let's move you to... Quarantine. And let's go ahead and unpause. While all that's happening, I guess I could come back in here and deal with some of this. There's gotta be there's gotta be a better way. Um Rapids foam. I wish there was like different lengths or something. Rapid splash I could do. Yeah, sure. All we really need is like like, it feels like the water's kind of, like, rushing through. Cool. Yeah, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. Excellent. I'm, I'm quite pleased with this, actually. I quite like how, uh, how this space feels. Again, if this was franchise mode, I would, like, kind of, like, build out the, the ramps and stuff and, and do up these things. Like, we'd get some nice fencing and stuff. I'm trying to find that balance of, like, well, what is the focus of these miniseries? And I feel like the focus is, like, these spaces. And if a space is ever integrated, then that's a different conversation. But, uh... But for me, it's 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 these spaces and seeing the animals interact and seeing what they do. And if, if, let me know, give me feedback on that. By the way, when I say something like that, I, I put it out there because I'd love to hear feedback. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm I'm always a feedback positive kind of guy. I like to hear how people feel about certain decisions I might be making and make adjustments accordingly. Right? When more DLC comes out for uh, for Planet Zoo, I want to take all that into consideration. Um, someone else I wanted to mention, and now it's completely slipping my mind. Man, I 
This, this space feels even better now that we've got even more trees in the area. I'm really quite pleased with uh, with this, actually. <laughs> Giving me confidence to, to try something like this again in the future. This is, yeah, this is feeling good. I'm liking this for sure. Nice. Find a nice kind of like angle for it, I guess. There's like, there's something, Oh, <laughs> Not what I meant. That's a, it's an interesting perspective as well. Um, there's like something going on on each side is kind of what I was hoping for. Visually for like guests when they're coming through, it's like, oh cool, a waterfall. Maybe you'll catch a glimpse of the sun bear eating or uh, you'll catch a glimpse of the one on the, on the hammock or you come down this way and they might be climbing or scratching or what have you. You go down even further, there's the tree foraging thing and the bobbin and whatnot. I quite like this space. Yeah, I quite like this space. You can see the waterfall pretty far out. I can imagine the sound of this place as well, right? Love when, when you can kind of like hear a digital space. It's very nice. I'm, 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 I'm actually... I've been, <laughs> I've been very happy with how our spaces have uh, sort of come out from this, uh, from this DLC. Uh, I did, as many of you pointed out, I did forget to put in a water pipe for these lovely little critters here. So why don't we get a water pipe down? Because they can't reach the water. Um, so they're probably... Their hydration is at 100% though, which is... A surprise. A welcome one, but surprise nonetheless. I'll have to occasionally keep an eye on these guys as well. Because there are a couple things we want to see from them, but... Focus, of course, is these sun bears today. Hopefully we get a baby um, binturong as well. Alright, let's get you guys in here. Very curious to see if they'll be able to navigate the space and if the keepers will be able to navigate the space as well. I haven't seen any warnings. Apart from, you know, these, whatever. <laughs> Irrelevant. I haven't seen any warnings, but an easy way to check is to get, like, put food trays down at the different levels. And that way it'll kind of tell you, like, oh, hey, you're... Uh, your keepers can't reach this food tray or what have you, but uh, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Again, if this was franchise mode, I would definitely have another, like, uh, staff room or what have you, like, somewhere up there or somewhere up over here so it's easier to service this. And I think our next enclosure will actually kind of go through this way and uh, and build up over here or something. This zoo is developing an interesting shape, isn't it? It's kind of weird. I, was, I, I thought I was wondering if I'd come back to this zoo or start a different DLC zoo. Kind of glad I came back to this one. We're getting a very interesting shape out of it. Quite like how the how the space is looking. This, by the way, all of this stuff. If you hadn't seen it when the uh, aquatic DLC came out, all that is on the channel as well. If you want to see how all that stuff gets got built and, and what's going on. Hey, here we go. They're both one on top of each other. Those tongues are very long. Oh, these guys are very cute. <laughs> They're not very small at all, actually. All right, hang on a second. Let's 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 check real quick. Get uh, some of the work out of the way first. Is it duties, uh, duties before cuties, as I've said before? This is not ideal, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and fix that. We're fine otherwise. All right, just a couple things to correct. Um, over to train. Got to get rid of the water first. Oh, I see what's going on. Pull this out. There we go. Get off. Cool, cool, cool. Actually, you know what? Block this out a bit further down here. Because they might be able to get under. I don't think so, but just in case. Might as well, right? Well, while we're doing it, why not? Nicer. Pop you down. Over here. There we go. I, I did kind of mess around with the water as well. Uh, in a couple places. I'm wondering if I want to do... There's something about the Everglade coloring, isn't there? I like the Amazon coloring as well, actually, in this uh, in this particular space. Let's. There's just something about the clean blue water. <laughs> let's try the Everglades space. Let's let's see if I let's see if I stick with it or if I if I swap it out or or what have you. I love as well that when you go under, it is a different like shader and stuff entirely. Yeah, I think I can get behind this. Sure, let's go ahead and unpause and let's uh, watch these uh, animals in action and uh, in play, hopefully as well. They can. Oh, they can climb out over here, right? Of course, they are climbers. Right. I was like, how are you getting out? You're just literally, literally climbing out. Climb proof on the left side. That should... Nope. Climb proof on the right side. 
There we go. That should prevent your escapes. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so these guys are definitely able to get down over here. Kind of open to see them in a hammock right off the bat. Oh no. How do we have, you know, we'll deal with it later. They are extremely cute. Ooh. Delia over here about to mate. Again, we want to try and keep an eye on these guys as well, right? Because we might have a baby Binturong today. That's the hope, at least. It is hard to get uh, reproduction among the Binturongs, but... Offspring due, February of year 12. Great. Right, back over here. What are you two up to? That's when the animations get kind of funny, is when they're navigating more difficult terrain. Let's smooth this out, and that might not happen again. Where are you off to? I'm always curious about what these digital animals are thinking at any given time. Dangerous fighting to incorrect ratios. Not necessarily what I want to be worrying about. Oh, you know what? That'll hopefully do the trick. And hopefully those animals are being fed. I wonder if I need to hire like more keepers and stuff. Where'd my bears go? Oh no. I have an escaped Babirusa. Emergency capture you. Might need to like raise these up so they're not able to get out as easily. The babies. Down there. Alright. Where did my bears go? Guides? I feel like they just like snuck all the way back over here, eh? Not down here. They're not up here. Guys? <laughs> not out over there. Okay. Oh, here they are them back over here this is the uh, unfortunate angle like what i could do is i could seal the the river off over or the, the water off over here uh but again i want to have that kind of island thing going i could block it off so that they don't get back over here and then again in franchise mode i'd be worried about guests upset about the view and whatnot but with sandbox we can just let the animals kind of uh have a good time what about swimming animation Come on. Can you get out? Nope. Staying in the water? Alright, fair enough. Been too wrong. They're hungry. You know what? I feel like I need a bunch more keepers. Uh, zoo. Staff. Oh, I can't even put them down in there. Oh, of course. I can't capture that. <laughs> Don't have to worry about money. I think it's just like they're not getting fed because there aren't enough people to handle all these tasks. So hopefully, that will stop us from needing to hire more keepers for a while. Where these guys go? There's actually an interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting amount of hiding options they have here. <laughs> Where are you? I want to make sure I... Oh, there we go. Come on, buddy. Come on. Do it. I think we're getting it. Alright, here we go. Oh, I'm so excited. Up you go. Alright. The... There we go. <laughs> Why is this my luck? 
I can I can see how this might look. Right, let's let's just flatten this. There we go. That's why, because it uses the ground as the uh, the origin point. I guess. Fair enough. How to climb out though? <laughs> They're so cute. He looks so like concerned. <laughs> That's a fun animation. That is a fun animation. I wonder if they always get up the same side and off the same side. Because I was hoping that when they're actually chilling in the hammock, they'd look out kind of like that way or something. Have a good time there, buddy. I'm gonna climb down this way. And you actually climb these? You know what I haven't checked? Yep, all taken care of. A little bit too little. Too much long grass. I don't even remember leaving any long grass behind. More short grass, that's for sure. Oh, you know what? It's probably because of all this. And I had to do that because of the, the bottom area. There we go. Oh, Adelius has had offspring. We'll check that out. All good. Looks like we're all good. Alright, let's look at these baby binturongs. You're not a baby. <gasps> oh no. They are too cute. If there was ever a description or ever a, ever a use of the term too cute. Ooh, cool land here. Really good stats. Alright, these guys are adorable. They were cute at maximum size, they're extra cute at uh, at minimum size as well. <laughs> Look at their legs. <laughs> the squashy faces. I don't know if these are supposed to be tippy taps or if they're supposed to be uh that's, that's, that's a walk animation. Oh my god. Right. Let's lower the ground a little bit too much there, isn't it? Yeah, it has. Hey, buddy. Did you see looking away from the camera? Yeah, okay, these guys are really cute. These guys are really cute. All right, back to our sun bears, though. Now, what I was checking for actually earlier was... Yeah, they are able to climb these. I really want to see them climb... Not just use the, the ramp over here, which does seem to be their preferred method. I could block it off if I really wanted to see them climb, but... Don't really feel like doing that. This is quite nice. Be able to come up here for food. I haven't seen a warning for keepers not being able to go certain places. Okay, all these animals are hungry. Why? Feed them. Everybody is hungry. Oh, I hope this isn't a bug or anything silly like that. Nourishment is down for everybody. I could add even more. Here, here's what we'll do. Um, facilities, super hut. Don't think I've needed work zones. I don't think I've established work zones. Yeah, I don't need one. Everyone can kind of like go wherever. That's fine. Need these animals fed though. I'm not sure what's going on. One of these down over here as well. If I feel it becomes necessary. Alright, here we go. I'm quite happy with this space, actually. The cave, the ramp, the climbing, the hammock and everything, the theme, the waterfall. You're pleased with the space. Oh, here we go again. Yeah? Yeah? Coming up here? Yeah, you are. I see you eyeing this space. There we go. Come on. There we go. There we go. That looks a lot better, the animation this time around. Looking over the corner there. Getting a good grip. And... Let go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> like, there it is. <laughs> like that. Just vibing, just chilling. 
I guess they do get up from the same side every time. Or it's just like that's the most convenient side to get up on and the animation stays the same, right? It's fairly symmetrical. Alright, good. Looks like you're staying for longer this time around. Maybe? No. You're gonna get off on this side, I assume? It's quite interesting as like, why do they like the hammock? Like, figuring out what kind of toys and stuff animals like, I always find it's so interesting. Like, we have a... We have a pet rabbit. It's always fascinating to me, like, what she engages with and what she ignores and what she finds interesting and what she hates. She seems to have, like, color preferences for her, uh, for her toys, for example. It's like, wait, are these actually color preferences or is there something you're seeing that we're not seeing? It's always funny. Yeah, those, those tongues are very long. Commented on that earlier as well, but this is like, now actually seeing them in motion. Still no climbing, eh? They were able to get there. They're just choosing not to. Where are they getting their climbing satisfaction from? Well, I built them a space. If they choose not to use it, that's up to them, of course. Guests are not quite coming down over here. Well, they are, just not in significant quantities all the way down over here. But I think once we add more enclosures up over here, we'll see the space get a fair bit busier. I really want to see the bears use this as well. Hopefully we'll see that. And like I said, climbing too, right? But who knows, maybe I've given them too much enrichment. I don't think I've seen them use this yet either. Let me see if they can reach it. They can, though not from here. So why don't we go ahead and move this. Oops. Smooth this out a little bit. Stake. How's that? There we go. Done. Cool. Now they can get into the water from over here as well. You know, that might be why they're going all the way there. Uh, to get a swim. Get a swim in. All well, these guys still hungry. Bets and keepers into some of these spots. I don't... Last thing I want is an animal not making it. I don't care that sandbox. That's still not uh, my idea of a good time. Alright, keepers are coming. Hopefully they'll deal with the situations. It's a lot of hungry animals. I take it the bears are going for a swim. We have a cleanliness issue over here. Oh, you know what? Right. Go ahead and get water treatment happening up over here. Half out this way. Corrupted. go. Got a water treatment plant. Or facility, rather I should say plant. Down over here. Done. Alright. Glad I noticed that. Oh man, of course I missed the climbing. Alright, it's okay. We'll, we'll catch the climb down, I suppose. Well, I'm glad they're using the space, at least. I'm glad they're using everything we've built for them. There we go. That's cool. Now, I don't know if they went up and then back down, or if they went from up top to down over here. That is a long climb, though. I was wondering if they'd be uncomfortable with the length of the climb, but I don't think the game actually takes that into consideration. Like, I don't know if there's the maximum height an animal is willing to go or not, you know? All right. Okay. A little low. Backflip there. Ooh, what you running about? Look at that run. Are you going to dive in? Oh, just short of it. Oh, look at this foraging thing, though. It's actually a lot larger than uh, than I thought. Up you go. There we go. I like this view as well. You get the vines back there. You get the trees. You got this guy having a meal. Done. Fair enough. Cool. All right. You know, our wishes are coming true. We're actually seeing. We're getting to see all this stuff. We got to see the Binturong baby, we got to see the climbing. Came back up, eh? Looks like they're not climbing all the way up to the top. Even though they can. Look at that. That is one courageous bear. This is pretty funny, actually. Slowly making its way down. 
Cool. Well, I mean, I'm glad to see that they're actually using, yeah, these toys. Are you, you're grabbing a meal up over here, right? Eh? Nice little hammock to chill in. As soon as you're done, you head over and grab a meal. You're really hungry, aren't you? Aren't you? You're the same one that just came up from the uh, little foraging spot. Ooh, are you about to climb down? Maybe? Come on, come on, come on. It's right there. Aw, yawning. That time. Post-meal nap. Definitely look like you're passing out. <laughs> What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Nothing, maybe eyeing more food. <laughs> they are very cute to see. They're not as small as uh, as I initially was concerned they might be. Move one of these over here, there we go. Clean this up a little bit. Are you gonna climb down? Hammock time. This is always finding me. Oh, they're about to mate. Alright, alright. Just a little bit of a neck rubbing animation. Do we have? Yes, we do. April of next year, so fairly soon, actually. We'll have some uh, baby sun bears. Nice. Not too long a wait. A lot of these animals still not having a good time. What is going on? Cleanliness is a problem over here, is it? We now have... Not power, right? But of course. The transformer, I believe it is, right? You up over here. Decent radius, but doesn't go all the way over to here. I wonder if I shouldn't actually move that one over. Or. This is far enough away, I would say. From, like, guests, like, it wouldn't upset them. Water treatment. That ought to do the trick. Cool. Glad I noticed that. Now, why are they not getting meals? Why are they not getting food? Keeper en route. Now, maybe we just need more keepers. A bunch of them down. Again, it's not costing us anything, so I'm not too concerned about that. That's a lot of keepers. We have 30 keepers for like, how many animals? <laughs> Not that many. Waiting for April of next year, eh? Low welfare, hungry animals, these seals. Keeper over. Otters, keepers en route. I haven't like, I think I've hired like what? 20 keepers today alone, animal is starving. That's just starting to get kind of ridiculous. Okay. And I... Get a keeper hut. In here, and will these guys... head over, or will they still... I stay backed up over here. Is is somebody in here? Is this being used right now? It isn't. They're just queuing up for no real reason. They're bugging out, basically. I was wondering, I was like, one keeper hut should be fine for this. See? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Wow. <laughs> New bug to watch out for, I suppose. I was gonna start dropping dead because of uh, because those 
absolute fools were just standing there staring out the uh, staring at a at a door. Fantastic. I do wonder if I shouldn't rotate this one maybe. Or if it'll be fine like this. Take a look at the habitat here. Yeah, they've got they've got access. I really want to catch them playing in the pool. There we go. April of this year we're waiting for, right? For babies. I'm again, I understand it is sandbox mode, but I'm still unreasonably maybe concerned about the well being of my animals. No one's in here, okay, good. There we go, food's finally coming through. Imagine they're all gonna rush over because they're starving. Meal time. All right, finally. Oh, little babies, they are so cute, though. Just like buried in the food. Those babies are adorable. All right, where's my baby sun bear, though? It's funny, the keepers were having no issue tending to the sun bears. Like, they got multiple meals while everybody else was starving. I'm glad the others are getting food now as well. But yeah, that was uh, that was not ideal. All right, we'll keep an eye out for it. Never had that happen before. Going a meal here. God, bears are adorable. Bears of all kinds. I don't think I can think of a bear that I don't like. You just... Oh yeah, there we go. Just having a seat. Like, what's there not to love? Got a better angle here. Are you just sleeping in your food? Oh my god. I built you a giant cave. That was like ten times the size of any cave you'd possibly need. Just pass that in the food instead. Probably have it. April. Very, very, very close to that, that baby coming out. Oh, looks like we have a climber. Alright, good stuff. Again, the question is, is he going to climb all the way or just part way? It looks like the animals are getting fed as well. Oh, hey, nice to see the little twist around. I believe we have... That was actually after the, uh, the separation of the two pieces. And turning around again, this time to climb up top. There we go. That was uh, that was cleaner than usual. Good. Going across this way. You're gonna go even higher. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, I really want to see them use this like a you know like an elevator, if you will. Now you're gonna head back down now, aren't you? Yeah. Babarusa are maturing. I do think I have to. Move some of them off. Can't remember their uh their numbers. Just uh, down over here. Check real quick. Base is a little tight, maybe now with so many of them. Wikipedia. Two to five, up to five males, up to five females. <laughs> it's almost like rolled over on its back. The babies aren't really adults yet, it's, it looks like. They're still in the process of uh, adulting. Oh, actually, no, we've got other babies as well. Skoro is 13.9. Zanya is going to have babies. Oh, it looks like we're having a lot of babies, actually. All right, we'll, 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 we'll deal with this shortly. Bathari is about to have offspring. Okay, we're having a lot of babies. I thought it was supposed to be hard. You passed out in your food still. Amazing. <laughs> Almost baby time. Nothing from this yet. Can't remember actually. Can you see uses of an item? Yeah, you can. Zero uses. That's unfortunate. Hopefully it'll get some love. The the hammock is getting a lot of love. The hammock's been used how many times? Well, once in the last 12 months. Fair. But we've seen it used more than once for sure ourselves with our own eyes. Those are still hungry here, eh?
Okay, hopefully that helps. April's right around the corner. Kind of tempted to speed up time a little bit. This needs cleaning. How many more keepers does the game want me to have? I got 30 for like, what, 10 animals? Now granted, without work zones, they're, uh, they're kind of roaming a bit more freely, I guess. They're a little less directed, so that's fair. What are you up to? Nice to see they can actually get underneath the hammock as well. It's not like a one-dimensional toy in that sense, but it just takes up all the space that it occupies. That's what you're up to. Okay, fair enough. Where is your counterpart? I like trying to find the animals, but it seems lost to me. Oh, there we go, having a seat again. Basking in the sun. Makes sense. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Are you an adult? You are not an adult. It is April. We have our baby sun bear here. Oh my god. I thought the proportions were a little different. Oh my god, they're so cute. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. So tiny. What are you looking at? Question is, do the baby bears use the uh, hammocks as well, or...? I quite like this space. Oh, <laughs> this run is absolutely adorable. Oh, into the- yes! Do it! Yes! Go! Go! Come on! Come on! Come on, come on, come on, come on! So close! I don't know if there's a unique animation. Ah! There's like the, uh, what is it, the dingoes? They have one, don't they? I believe it was the dingoes that we that we've seen do uh, do like a unique little thing with the the water pools and whatnot. I was hoping for the same. You're going up. You're going up. We have one up top already. You gonna join him? Mm, no. Oh yes, yes, yes. Look at that sun bear go. <laughs> Off in the distance they're dropping. Now, this is actually pretty fun to see them all on the climbing platform all at once over here. I was worried this thing wasn't going to get much use, but uh, I stand corrected. Oh, and look at that. Look at that actually going into the cave using this as well. Cool. The only thing we're yet to see is them uh, climb up. Like, either go all the way up or all the way down, basically. Having a seat. As yes, baby is really cute. Oh, having a light. No. Again, basking in the sun. <laughs> and, and back in the distance there, the little one making its way down. <laughs> that uh, certainly sparks joy. Well, folks, that I think is where we're going to call it. I hope you enjoyed this session. I had a lot of fun with this time lapse. I actually, had a lot of fun experimenting with uh, with this space. I'm quite pleased with how it looks. I'm quite pleased with how it's being used and everything. The only thing we weren't able to catch was the use of the uh, the water pool thing over here. But I'm sure we'll. We'll get an opportunity. We got to see this in action. We got to see the hammock in action. We got to see the climbing platform and stuff being used. This is great. So as this family is uh, looking like it's about to go to bed, all three of them, uh, it's time to put this episode to bed. But of course, not this series. Folks, if you have been enjoying this so far, if you would like to see more of these kind of like mini-series approaches and whatnot, if you'd like to see this mini-series continue, please leave a like down below. 
let me know. It does make a very big difference, again, in how I approach content on the channel. Just another reminder that if you want to pick up the DLC for yourself, you can do so at the link in the description and pinned comment down below. You can support the channel in that way while getting the DLC for yourself as well, or the game, or countless other games as well. You can check that link out for other games too. But uh, yeah, and do not forget to let me know which animal you might like to see next. I have some in mind, though, of course, uh, if I see sort of comments leaning a certain way or another, I will take that into account. Folks, hope you had a good time. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.